hello and welcome along to this Wing Tray Rising Stars Series Regional Final for the Americas. It's Jack Appleyard and Jack Gorse with you to talk you through the action at the Circuit of the Americas. Let's take you through your front row of the grid. Taking pole position on the Monster Marama Heart is Gusta, joined there by Bruno and Christian RR. On the second row of the grid, we do have Nunes on the Patronus bike, Super Amassi on the LCR and Barre on the East Monsterama Racing Ducati. Two Brazilians, two Argentinians, sorry, three Brazilians, two Argentinians and a Chilean on the front two rows of the grid. Then on row three, a Colombian, Daniel HG, an American, Macargo, and another Argentinian in the form of Nancy. And on the back row of the grid, we do have Bastona 92 on the Tech 3 machine. And in 11th place, it's the hit stick on the Pramac Racing Ducati. These guys all fighting it out for a place in the 2021 MotoGP eSport Pro Draft. Only one invitation, that going the way of the victor. Lights on, and now lights off here at the Circuit of the Americas. And it's not a perfect start from pole position for Gusta. Bruno on the Suzuki, the Argentina has got the run uphill into turn one, and Gusta's gone backwards. The pole man is up two thirds now. First, where is he? It's a great drive out of the first corner for Gusta, and he's now wheel to wheel with Bruno for the lead. Oh, the pair touch, the pair touch, but somehow they stay on. And it's Bruno that leads after that first exchange, an exciting one as well. The Argentinian versus the Brazilian, and it's the Argentinian that comes out on top. Ooh, the opening half a lap here at the Circuit of the Americas. Yeah, absolutely cracking start from Bruno on the Suzuki. He now leads out of this first sector. Obviously, absolutely cracking sector is now charged down through to 10, down towards the tight really tight hairpin before they fly onto the back straight. Gusta for a minute, I thought he was going to sweep. Oh, he's already got a track limits penalty. I'm not too sure where he ran onto the green stuff, but already race direction has caught him and given him the first lap on the wrist. And we see plenty of people going way out wide, missing their braking marks as we now fly down the back straight. 340 kilometers an hour, pretty much. Absolutely flying over 200 miles an hour. It looks as though Gusta actually got into the lead somehow. Didn't even see that one on there. Oh, it's Bruno. <laughs> I thought for a second the only way he could go was into the front wheel and into the side of Gusta, but he somehow got it stopped in the end. Meanwhile, these pair are going back at it once again. Gusta looking for a way through. No, sorry, Gusta looking to hold off Bruno, who was looking for a way through, but he could not find any way through whatsoever. Gusta so far holding on the pole man after a disastrous start. So dropped back to fourth or fifth at one point as eventually climbed his way back through and it's now the Brazilian that leads the way here at Cota but he has got company and some company as well. Bruno will not be giving this one up. Yeah, certainly not. And don't forget about Christian RR on the KTM and Nunes on the Trinity Yamaha in the background as well. As we see, not too sure who that was. I just missed that one popping up. Someone has that. The Stoner, Stoner nightmare for the American. He was on the back row of the grid actually in the last. So, not going to get much better for him. Anyway, lap two, they charge up the hill at turn one into the braking zone. Cracking little corner this as they now dive down the hill into turn two really fast. On the previous lap, I thought Gusta was going to drop over the nose of them all and lead, but he didn't in the end. But this time he does. And still leads the way at the moment. They go left, right, left, now right once more, right once again. A super, super technical part of the track here. Well, nearly all of it is super technical, to be honest, but that, one of the more so parts of this Circuit of the Americas. We have a crash of Super Messia, riding in number one for some reason in Super Messia. I don't know why he's got the number one plate on. He's certainly not living up to that number one pedigree at the moment. <laughs> the Chilean crashing out and dropping down to the ninth. Legs. Meanwhile, a change for fourth is it here? Yes, Nunes just ahead. No, now up to third. Sorry, is the Brazilian? He's got his nose in front of Christian RR as we come down the back straight here. <laughs> Christian RR has got the inside line now. He's going to look for a way through, but oh, oh, there's contact, contact, and down goes Nunes as Christian RR gone down as well. Has. No, no, he stayed in third. He stayed in third. The KTM man somehow <laughs> gets away with it. He T-bones Nunes, poor old Nunes of the Petronas Yamaha SRT. Absolutely T-boned into oblivion and now he's down in seventh. And Christian R.R. just says, thank you very much indeed. I'll take that one, mate. Yeah, well, if you can't go around him, you may as well go through and force him off the racing line and pop into 
third. Is it now promotes Nanchi up into fourth? He's had a cracking start. He's actually ninth on the grid. We cut back to Nunes. Down in seventh now, staring at the back of Daniel HG on that factory to Catty. But there's no problems for this man out front so far. He's got the pressure of Bruno 83. As Christian Arras actually just took the front nightmare for him. So retaliation, a little bit of uh, payback and karma there as he took the front of the final corner. Bit of comeuppance for Christian Arras. <laughs> That promotes Nancy up to third, but only momentarily because that is a dive bomb and a half coming from Barry, the Brazilian. It's not a usual Brazilian name. I think with the accent on the end, it's supposed to pronounce with a little bit of flair like Barre. But we'll go with Barry, the East Ponsorama racing man, now up to third place. Good ride coming from the Brazilian. Started sixth and he's chipped away and now up to third and in contention for picking up this 2021 eSport Pro Draft place. At the moment, though, it looks like going to either Gusta or Bruno. Those are the two men that qualified first and second, currently riding first and second as well. And they have got themselves quite an advantage over this battle for third place. Another crash for Christian R. Our disaster for the number 81, the KTM man, now definitely well out of contention. Yeah, he's uh, kind of shot himself in the foot for those two crashes there. Now all the way down to ninth. As we go on board once again with Nancy on the Aprilia. Listen to that little beautiful four walking down the straight. Staring at the back of Barry, as you pronounce it. Jack can tell you off your own. Anyway, dropping down into the braking zone at the end of the straight into turn 12. This is a tricky one, really. We've got to be careful not to tuck the front ears. We see Nunes actually closing in on these two again trying to get back into those podium places. Well, it's the least he deserves, Nunes, really. I do feel sorry for him. He was there in third place, showing a good turn of form, and then he got absolutely mullered by <laughs> Christian Ara. So he's now refound his form and trying to chip his way back through up into third place. But I think that's the best he can really hope for at the moment, because the two guys out front have not seen him for a while. That's because they're all way with it. Custer, the number 44, and the 83 of Bruno, the Yamaha and the Suzuki, have really found their feet around the counter during the opening couple of laps. They were away with it at the front, and we're focusing in quite rightly on this interesting battle for third place, because there's three riders. You could throw a handkerchief over them at the moment, with Barre leading the way over Nancy and Nunes. Yeah, it does seem as though that Nunes has probably got the pace to uh, pick off these two, as it looks as though he's going to do that exactly as he dives down. A little block pass at turn one, just parks it on the apex and slides past the Aprilia RSGP20 machine of Nanchi. So Nanchi down to fifth, and now Nunes is going to set his sights on Barre, the Brazilian in third. Nice move that from Nunes, really nice move into turn one. Uh, pretty much perfect turn one move here at the Circuit of the Americas. We've seen a little bit of contact between all of the riders when they tried to make a move, but that time no contact whatsoever. It was clean, it was sensible, and most importantly, it got the job done. Through into fourth then for Nunes, He's now got his compatriot ahead of him, Barre, on the East Sponsorama racing machine. Can he get the better of his fellow Brazilian? Talking of Brazilians, here's the one that's leading the way so far. Gusta, aboard the Monster Energy Yamaha Moto GP. And I must say, Nick Gusta, his number 44 at the front. It's very much a Lewis Hamilton style number 44 with a little bit of Brazilian flair. Talking of Brazilian flair, what an exciting and fantastic interlude that was from me because I've then seamlessly transitioned <laughs> into the number five of Nunes getting his way in front of the Sponsorama racing rider of Bere. Bere goes backwards, Barry struggling a little bit here around Cota and Nunes showcasing the form that put him onto the second row of the grid. We heard a little bit, good bit of uh, noise in our headphones there. It sounds like someone took the front but it looks like They've done okay. Oh. So as a result, it stays as is with Nunes, Barre and Nancy all battling it out for third place here in Austin. At the front though, still Guster and Bruno. We didn't really get a good look at the gap between them last time around. Hopefully we'll be able to see that momentarily. Meanwhile though, a little bit of mistake there from Nunes. An opportunity now for Barre to hopefully come alongside them. We saw a great move from Nunes into turn one this time last lap. Can Bray do the same? No, he can't because Nunes goes a little bit defensive, gets it perfect through turn one and now will drop downhill into the fast right-hander of turn two. Then in towards, well, it's a little bit like the Silverstone Complex, uh, Vale and the rest of them as well as you go left, right, left, right, flick it from side to side to side to side. These guys already through there. That's the advantage of Gusty at the moment. Then, so we 
is the second you have to say Jack a little bit of a twitch there just got to be careful we're into the second half of the race now four laps completed of course so Taylor will come into it a little bit but so far so good for Gusto looking pretty comfortable out front yeah so far so good looks as though he's got it under control I do hope he does because well especially in our 6 does have under control I think that's his fourth crash now is he all the way down to the ninth, well, he's still in ninth, shall we say. But yeah, Gusto looks as though he's got it under control. We are approaching the danger zone for tyres and also fuel now as well. This Kota circuit is pretty demanding on both bike and rider. So they've got to be careful they're not using too much of that rear tyre, otherwise they're going to spin themselves off for a massive high side. As we had to do the last time around, Bruno was the fastest man on the track. Down under the two-minute range at a 159.5. Oh, <laughs> thought that Barre had almost took the front there, gave me a little half attack. Nunes still clinging on. He's done that so many times with Barre, hasn't he? He has, A yeah. couple of times I thought, oh, he's down, he's down, but somehow he recovers it. He's pretty loose out there. He's a number 96, but it's working for him so far. Fourth place, not a bad run from the Brazilian. If he can continue that as we get into the latter stages of this race. But as you rightly say, Jack, pinpointing the fact that Bruno, last time around, was the fastest man on track. I thought that Gusta had it under control, but maybe not. I think we have. Got a race on our hands here around the circuit of the Americas. Five laps completed, three remaining, and it's going to come down to either Gusta or Bruno to win themselves a place in the 2021 MotoGP Esport Pro Draft. It certainly is, and i tell you what, Jack, coming up that braking zone into Turn 1, it's actually a massive rise all the way up to that tight little hairpin at the top of the hill there. It always makes me just cringe and hold my breath a little bit because I always think they're going to tuck the front. Personally, in my experience of this game, I crash there about every single lap, so these boys are doing a pretty good job as we see Gusto well, sliding it all the way around the rear, hanging out on that monster end of Yamaha. Seems to be pretty comfortable and in control of what he's doing out front. Oh, Beret's oh. gone down. Barry's binned it. He's tucked the front somewhere. Surely is what he's been flirting with over the past couple of laps, but finally he's given way, and there he is, back down in sixth place. Could soon be seventh place as well, because the Chilean sequence here is all over his rear wheel. As Barry dives to the inside, oh, that's oh. dangerous, and he gets it done. <laughs> oh, what a move from Barry. Absolute motocross star block pass, used him as a bird and absolutely punted him wide and got perfect drive, I've got to say. <laughs> well, quite rightly, he has been given the race for the morning for breakfast riding. So, uh, yeah, no surprise to see that one barge up, as we see. Ooh. Oh, Daniel <laughs> H. I thought he was going to clip the back of him there. That was close. And he gets it all wrong on the brakes down into turn 12. He very nearly collected both Barry and Supernassier in that one. But the fact that the Catty Man just about avoids both of them as the Colombian now settles into seventh place. Yeah, great move by this man. Dive bomb Barry gets the job done <laughs> into turn 11. He came from an absolute country mile back, but he planted it up the inside, gave a knee, an elbow, a little bit of a headbutt to Daniel HG for good measure as well. But he sees him back into the top five now. He will definitely have lost touch with both Andrew and Nunes in that battle for third, so top five for the best we can hope for now. And it looks as though he's got a fight on his hands to pick up that top five finish. Super massive, had a big look up the inside into the final corner there. Couldn't get anything done. What, we're on to the penultimate lap. I think it's a matter of when, not if, Super Masia has a look up the inside. Super defensive already from Barry. He's going to have to do quite a bit of defensive riding over these next two laps just to hold on to that top five finish. Yeah, certainly is. Now we've come through that fifth lap section. Look, Super Masia just looks a little bit tired. And Barry actually puts track limits there once again. So be on the, uh, the lookout for a little track limits warning for him. Possibly race direction will be dishing one of those out. Super massive, it's extremely close as well. But anyway, as we round out this first sector of the lap, we've got one and a half laps to go for these three, as that is a phenomenal corner cut from Daniel HG. I'm not too sure he's going to be able to hang on to that position, but anyway, we'll go with it. It is eSports after all, so yeah, crack on, fellas. I think he... Um I don't think he should have been away with that one. <laughs> he, uh, a little bit dodgy with yeah. Daniel H. He, the Colombian, just, just uh, bending the rules ever so slightly, but we'll see. I'm sure he may well get a time penalty. We're not notified of it just yet, but when we get to the official classification at the end of the race, we may well find out it may well not mean a single thing because Super Masia, around the outside, with the rear wheel off in the air, gliding his way into turn 12, eventually 
had to give way because Daniel HG had the inside line, but 10 out of 10 for effort by the number one of Super Massia there. And all that these two were doing, battling and swapping places, was just allowing Barry to edge ever closer to that top five finish. Look at that advantage he's got now, a pretty comfortable five, six, seven, eight bike lengths he's got over the factory Ducati of Daniel HG behind. On to the final lap though here in Austin and it's still Gusta that leads the way the number 44. Here he is, the Brazilian. Has he got Bruno for company? Are we going to see any last lap drama here in Austin? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely miles back. He's cleared off of this one. Caught a huge gap and then pretty much it's all just about bringing this one home for Gusta. He's been absolutely inch perfect so far clipping every apex and every line possible so yeah i'm pretty sure this one is a foregone conclusion for the brazilian job done for the brazilian so far then half a lap to go bruno will obviously still be throwing absolutely everything at it hoping to try and find something pounce on a mistake that gusta is yet to make it's been inch perfect from the number 44 so far nunez a good ride from him as well i think one of the performances of the day despite the disappointment of having that well i was going to say coming together despite <laughs> being t-boned by christian rr in the early stages he has battled back he found his rhythm and will take a podium finish meanwhile this one's going to go right down to the wire daniel hg and super Masia contact as they were hard on the brakes into turn 11 there we're on to the back straight the ducati's going to tuck in behind the lcr honda and you can be absolutely certain that he's going to find a way through he's got the inside line as well we're getting to the braking zone now daniel hg is in front the Chilean of Supermassi is surely going to have to give way, which he does, and he's dropped down to seventh place as a result. But into the final sector is this man, the number 44 of Gusta. The Brazilian has been absolutely superb here in Austin, Texas. He's into the final corner now, hard onto the brakes. If he can get it out of here, as he has done perfectly the previous eight times, he will be the race winner, and he takes the checkered flag. Victory for Gusta and a place in the 2021 MotoGP eSport Pro Draft as a result as well. And who would deny him that? Fastest in all four online challenges, pole position and now victory. The perfect clean sweep for Gusta. Yeah, phenomenal ride for Gusta. He had to get his elbows out to do it, but he didn't put a foot wrong the rest of the time and he came home. He had pressure from Bruno pretty much the whole race, just that last lap or two. Bruno seemed to slip back, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Gusta will beat the man, the number 44, the Monster Energy Yamaha, to go into that 2021 Pro Draft. And we may very well see him do something similar in next year's Global Series. He doesn't confirm that he'll be in the Global Series, but with form like that, I'm sure he'll be on the top of many MotoGP team shopping lists by the time it comes around in 2021. Here's official confirmation of the results then, with Gusta eventually taking victory by one and a half seconds ahead of Bruno. Good ride from the Argentinian. Nunes takes the final podium place ahead of Nancy, with Barre eventually taking that top five rack finish after an entertaining ride by the Brazilian. Super Masia, Christian RR, Daniel HG, Mr. Hitstick, Macargo and Bastona are our final finishers around the circuit of the Americas. But the story of the day, the headlines have been grabbed by the Brazilian. Gusta takes victory in this win trade. Rising Stars regional final for the Americas.